Hello, I'm Anxious Cynic, and welcome back to another Mindimator tutorial. We got our scene set up, and we have Steve walking into the scene, and our Iron Golem, he's basically just holding out the disc there for no good reason, and um, we need something to happen, right? We need some action. So today we're going to be talking about how to animate objects, and that's going to involve parenting, and how to try to animate physics, and using transitions to accomplish all of those things. So hopefully this will go a little smoother than last time. <laughs> but regardless, we're going to give it our best shot. So, first thing we want to do here is animate our Iron Golem to basically make a to tossing, <laughs> throwing movement. So what we got is our Iron Golem's arm selected, and... Let's just go ahead and go to frame 15 for now. We may move it. And at this point, let's just say he's standing here. And we'll bend that to make it a little more natural. And he's just kind of holding it out. He's got no real purpose or anything. And what he needs to do... All right, so what he needs to do here... Sorry about that. Uh, is he needs to raise his arm back. And he's going to bend it. Now, this is going to be a really exaggerated throw. He doesn't really need to toss it that hard for Steve when he gets, he's, you know, he's coming up pretty close. But uh, just for the sake of the tutorial, he's going to act like he's going to chuck it as far as he can. So, uh, basically what we have now is he does this. He pulls it back, and we're just going to go ahead and add a little transition to this keyframe. Let's do it. Uh, let's try that one. So it kind of slowly starts and then eases his arm back. And then you basically just want to have him kind of fling it. But, you know, Steve's still walking up, so we don't want to do it immediately. So what we're going to do is, now that we have two keyframes, let's say we want him to wait. So we're going to leave these here to create that space. Now what you could do, instead of having two here, you could uh, just go ahead and make this one an instant. But... Since we want to transition here, I'm going to go ahead and make it two keyframes. Hopefully that makes sense. And um, I'm going to try, let's, let's do this one. We're going to do that. And then when we get to this point, and he's going to bend his arm out, then we'll see what that looks like. So he rears back, and he waits, and then he tosses. Boom! See that? And then that transition that we chose, which is ease out back, it's towards the bottom of our list here, that gives that little, like, we don't have to animate that. He already gives, it already gives the uh, little bounce there. Sorry. Stepping over my words yet again. All right. So we get that. But as you can see, there are no inherent physics. He's not letting go of the disc yet. And this is where the hard part comes in, unfortunately. So what we need is to go to our arm here. Okay, and there's, there's the disc, and the disc is not animated. So as of now, I don't know if there will be a different method implemented in a future version of Minimator, which is supposed to be coming out pretty soon as of this recording. Uh, you have to basically create multiple objects and parent them and animate them to blend together. So what we're going to do is we have our disc here, and we're going to duplicate this. We're going to make another one, and then we're going to bring it down into the timeline. And then what we want is for it to be invisible until we get to the point where it gets thrown. So what we want to do is match it up to the keyframes that we have for our Iron Golem's arms. Let's bring this up. And then, as you can see, we have it here, and probably, let's see, somewhere, you know, you, when you throw something, it leaves your hand before your arm stops moving, basically. So let's have it right about there. So we'll, we'll bring our keyframe here for our disc. And what we want to do is try to match it up to the position uh, of our Iron Golem's arm, the disc in his hand, anyway. So, we're just going to kind of mimic that. Oh, yeah, we need to change the rotation here. Something like that. Close enough. You can obviously tweak things to be a little more accurate if you want. Anyway, what we're going to do is just try to match it up a little bit better here. Bring it up. 
and tilt it. It doesn't have to be 100% uh, perfect. Obviously, depending on your scene, we were working pretty close to the center of the scene here, I guess. So this worked out pretty easily, pretty well. Anyway, so what we want to do is at this point, this is when our uh, object is going to become visible. So we're going to set a keyframe right before that one, make it invisible so that it shows up, boop, right there at that frame. And then what we want that to do is to go ahead and fling over to Steve. And let's see, Steve's already stopped. So it's going to show up, depending on how fast we do it. Okay, that's way too slow. So what we want to do is make it a little faster. Maybe not, not quite that fast. There we go. Not too bad. It's going to take a little bit of tweaking uh, to until we get it where we need it to be, obviously. So when it ends, it's going to be down here. Like Steve's going to grab hold of it. So Steve's right about there. And let's say we're going to go ahead, just so we have our placement all set up, we're going to go ahead and have Steve have his arms out at the point that we need. So what we're going to do is come up here, and maybe he's kind of caught off guard, right? So he wants to kind of jut his hands up pretty quickly. He's like, oh, God, right? <laughs> he's trying to catch that disc before it flies into his face. Also, let's move this here. Let's, let's have him catch it, like, right about dead center. And here we go. So we'll have Steve do this. Let's bring his thing over there. Okay. And then instead of having both selected, if you... All right. If you have both selected and you try to do this, then he's just going to do like that. So you got to select just one arm. Let's bring it in. And... Just for a simple thing. We could try to like tilt the arms and stuff like that, but we don't really need to. It's it's okay like this. Boom. All right. Sorry about that. Fine tuning and stuff. All right. So he catches it like that. And let's go ahead and move this up a little bit. If we bring this up here. We want to catch it something like that. That's not too bad. All right. So when we zoom out, we're going to take a look and it just kind of goes uh, but usually when you toss something it's not going to go at you know a linear motion like that it's going to have a little bit of you know it's going to be fastest probably when it leaves his hand and then kind of slow down as it goes but uh, I don't think we're going to use a transition to mimic that right away because we don't want it to go just straight you see how it's just going straight down like that we want to give it a little bit of you know kind of a physics element to it and what we're going to do here is look at the the z here this is 185.49 and then at this point is 176.62 so let's just raise that up let's just try 179 that might be too much that's not too bad we could go a little bit more let's let's try uh 181 and then here, let's just say, let's make it right about there. We'll bring it up to say 176. And then when we watch it, <laughs> all right, it's a little bit poor. We're gonna have to work on that a little bit. All right, let's bring this one down. 178, let's try that again. Okay, what we've got here going on, see this is, it takes a little bit of finessing, but you may notice the drop here is too steep. This one's, you know, nowhere near steep enough and uh, is causing this problem. So what we want to do so far, we're going to tweak this, but let's make it about 172. All right, one of the problems we're having here is that it's uh, happening a little too slowly. This motion that we have here may not really be that big of a deal if it happens a little faster. So what we're going to do is take some of these and move them in and just tweak the timing to kind of get a feel for how fast things need to go. And obviously you'll need to watch the whole animation to kind of get a, a feel for how fast he's throwing it. You know, his arm flings up pretty quickly, so you know, you expect that it's going to have 
a good amount of force behind it. So we're just going to try to make it a little bit faster here. And that goes way too fast at the uh, end there. So we want to draw that out. And then now on this keyframe, let's make it have this. So let's have it kind of slow down and ease into a stop, right? Um, also, let's see what, uh, what this one will do. Since it's going to end up in his hand and he's going to be catching it, then we may be able to use another kind of slight animation there with this transition, how it has this little ramp up at the end. It kind of has a little bit more of a slow down, but to an abrupt stop. So let's drag it out a little bit more to see if we can get the consistency. Maybe back a little bit. Something like that. All right. And Steve is, uh, he's not there in time. Like the, his arms are not doing what we need to have in time. So what we're going to do is drag these up. And let's see if we can have it. All right. So what's, what's going on here with this? <laughs> Sorry, this is a little bumpy, but you you might go through these processes in, on your own. So let's cover everything. All right. What's happening here is this movement of his arm is kind of causing things to mess up. So let's go ahead and get rid of these. So he's going into that walking pose and then suddenly he's like, oh, he has to catch it, right? So let's bring that up. It's getting there, something like that. So he juts his arms up. He's like, oh my God, there we go. And then at the point where he catches it, hang on, let's, uh, let's see if we can get it to end up right there. It'll make it a little bit easier. Uh, let's... It's going to be a little difficult here. All right. So we have him catch it. And then what we need is it to look like he actually catches it, right? So we're going to have to duplicate this disc again. So we have this one here. And all we want is this last keyframe here. So we're going to get rid of these. And then as usual, the one before it, we're going to have it be invisible. And then at this one, we're going to have it become invisible, but for now we're going to need it to help line up this other one that we have. We're going to go ahead and parent this one to Steve's, uh, let's just say his right arm. All right. And what we're going to have to do is go into our Steve here, and there's the disc, and we're going to have to do like that. Reset his position, and now we have to reposition this one based on what has changed. So... We're going to go ahead and do our best. Unfortunately, the way the axes work in uh, Minimator, it upsets things when other things are rotated. So we're just going to have to try to do our best to sort this out and kind of eyeball it into place. But it's not impossible. It can be done, and we're going to do it. All right? There we go. That's pretty much close enough. And we'll see what that looks like, just as is. Let's see what that what that does. All right, and then let's deselect it so that we can see. All right, and then here on this one, or no, hang on, this one, <laughs> we're going to make it go invisible. So let's, let's watch this. There we go. All right, so one of the things we didn't do, however, is make this disc rotate as it goes. So what we're going to do is delete that. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean for this to happen. All right, so what we're going to do is have it spin oh, a few times. We can't actually see it. Let's turn the visibility back on. There we go. Something like that, and we'll have it end up in about the same position. So he tosses it, and it spins. There we go. Should have done that earlier. Sorry, my bad. But this shows you, if you forget anything, it's not that horrible to go back and redo it. See? And the spinning may not look 100%, but it, it looks good enough for this for the purposes of this tutorial, okay? There we go. And he tosses it, and it spins, and let's make this a little bit simpler, just to give it a little bit of physics. Now that the spinning is there, then all of that's going to remain in place for us. So what we want to do 
is just let's bump it up to 176 and see how that goes. All right, and then let's see what happens if we give this the transition that we had on the last one. It may not really be necessary to have it. Uh, you can tweak it depending on the type of throw you're having and the type of scene that you're trying to do. All right, see how that kind of juts it forward too much? We're just going to leave it linear. We're going to have it just kind of toss, and then Steve catches it. Doop! And uh, there you go. And then what you probably would want to do is animate Steve to kind of like you know, bend and like, oh, like you like just called it. We went over some of that in the last episode, though, animating your character and whatnot. I don't think it's something we really have to go after here. Just use your own creativity, and hopefully these tutorials are giving you the tools that you need to create the scene and get the reaction and the effects that you want. So if I can stop stumbling over my words here, sorry about that. Um, as you can see here, you have to have three discs in order to make this simple animation work out. And that's kind of, it's not that great. You know, it sucks to have to make that many. But if you want the effect, then this is what you're going to have to do in order to make it happen. Again, the next version of MyAnimator may have a different method. Uh, some people have brought it up on the forums. I don't know if it's going to be implemented or not. But if so, then maybe we'll do an updated version of this tutorial. All right. But there it is. There's your throw. The... Iron Golem uses all of his mighty strength. He tosses it. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I just realized we did not make it disappear. So that looks a little weird that he throws it and he basically clones it. You know, he's a hacker. So what we're going to have to do is go to the disc here in the Iron Golem's arm. This is our disc. It has no keyframes. And what we want to do is put a keyframe there right when this one that we have flying through the air becomes visible and we want this one to become invisible. So, there we go. We'll do that. And then, let's say at this point, you know, the Iron Golem brings his arm down. Something like that. There we go. See? Very simple. Very easy. Once again, <laughs> my uh, ineptitude, if you want to call that, uh, Shows you just how to deal with these little issues that you may come about. Oh, my God. Here we go again. So there he goes. He drops his arm. That's it. That's how you animate objects. Try to add a little physics to them. Because, like I said, this wasn't a very big movement of uh, raising it here. But generally, things don't just go in a straight line after you throw them. They're going to kind of arc or arch their way around and then dip at the end. Things like that. You can kind of watch things in the real world and practice with it to get the effects that you want to get. But that should give you the tools that you need to make it happen, just like I said earlier. So we're going to leave it off with that. Hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope <laughs> it wasn't too clunky. And uh, I hope you learned something. So thanks for joining me. And I hope you'll come back for the next Manimator tutorial where maybe we'll be talking about animating a camera to shoot your scene.